Hey, it's Elise Pickett with the Urban Harvest, and today I am going to be talking to you about seaweed fertilizer and mulch for organic gardening. If you've been looking into organic fertilizers or different materials to amend your raised bed gardens with, you may have come across kelp or kelp meal. And it is an absolutely wonderful soil amendment to use for organic gardening. But what most people may not connect the dots on is kelp is seaweed. And since we are Florida gardeners um, growing food in Florida, we are very lucky to have seaweed right in our own backyards. So what I did was go to the beach last week and I collected a bunch of seagrass put it into some totes and brought it home. I would rinse it and I've let it dry out for a few days. I'm gonna go through that process for you in more detail, but this is going to be used as mulch and as seaweed fertilizer for my garden beds over the summer months. Why use seaweed as a fertilizer and mulch besides the fact that you can collect it for free? Seaweed is really high in micronutrients. So a lot of our um, NPK stuff focuses on the main nutrients, but our soil in general is lacking in a lot of the micronutrients that are still really important to the plant to um, grow big and strong and healthy. So um, seaweed has a lot of micronutrients in it. The other really cool thing about seaweed is it's a plant. And they have done university studies that look at seaweed or kelp as a fertilizer an organic fertilizer in your garden and they found that it has growth hormones, plant growth hormones, naturally of course, um, in the seaweed itself, but that actually transmits to your vegetable garden. So when you put seaweed into the beds, you're actually getting the plant growth hormones from the seaweed and they have proven that it is bigger growth in your plants. Um, and higher yields by adding seaweed or kelp as a fertilizer in your organic garden. When you're collecting at the beach, um, you should check to make sure that it's okay in your area. Most of the beaches are raking it anyhow, so you're just doing something that's helpful, but if you are in a state park or um, any sort of protected or natural area, it is definitely a good idea to double check whether it is allowed for you to collect the seagrass. One of the downfalls of this, and it's sad to say, is all of the trash that you're gonna find uh, mixed in. And that's unfortunately just shows you the state of our waterways. I try to collect it at the beach itself and dump it in the trash can there. Definitely do another thorough check as I'm adding it to the garden bed to make sure that I pull all of that out and dispose of it. Um, ideally, you wouldn't want any of that in the garden bed. After you've collected the seaweed from the beach, um, it is time to rinse it. Now this step is optional, uh, I usually do. It has been so dry this year though, normally when I collect it, I just let rain do it for me. I'll put it in the corner of the garden or the yard for a few days, wait for a good rain to rinse it out for me, and then I'll add it to the beds. It has been so dry this year that I can't rely on the rain. So I am hosing it off and it just gets some of the extra sand and salt out of there. If you're only doing this as an occasional amendment or once a year mulch type of thing, it's not really too concerning. Even though there is some salt that will be in the seaweed, you can add it directly to the beds. I'm um, just giving it a good rinse. And if you want, if it's a thick um, bucket or anything like that, kind of toss it around just a little bit. What you're trying to do is get all of that sand and a little bit of that extra salt to drain and rinse away. If you're doing it in a bucket, make sure you're pouring the water off and rinsing again. Um, just because it will build up in the water if it's just kind of pooling in there. So now you've collected your seagrass from the beach, you've rinsed it real good. The next step is to let it dry out a little bit. Again, this is technically optional, but it just gives you a better picture of how thick or how deep the seaweed is actually going to be in your garden bed if you give it a day or two to dry out in the sun. 
Now this bin was completely full to the brim, even overflowing a little bit when I collected it from the beach when it was wet. Now that it's dried, you can see how much it's compressed once all of that extra moisture um, left the seagrass. So this gives me a better idea or a better picture of how much I'm actually putting into the garden beds. Kind of think about it like the grass clippings if you mow your lawn. Um, if you don't bag the grass clippings, you, it starts out as a big pile, but within sometimes half a day, maybe a day, it kind of fizzles away to nothing. It's the same with the seaweed. So I like to leave mine sit out a day or two just so that I know that I'm getting a nice thick layer on the beds. If you choose to go directly to the beds after you rinse it, that's totally fine. I would just go more than what you think you need. So if your goal is four inches of seaweed after you're done adding it, maybe shoot for closer to six if you're adding it to your beds wet. Now it's time to add it to your garden bed. You are ideally, if you're using the seaweed mulch more than the seaweed fertilizer, um, for a good mulch layer, you want at least four inches of mulch. So that would be ideal, but it is a lot of seaweed to collect. So if you're using it more for a seaweed fertilizer rather than the mulch, you can use it in lower quantities, but I might as well get two uses out of one process. So I like to go for it as a fertilizer and a mulch. While you're adding it to the garden beds, do make sure if you have anything planted in the beds that you leave room around the base of the plants just like you would with any other mulch material. At least an inch away from the base, if not two. And if there's anything that's low growing, make sure to lift up the plant and tuck the um, seaweed underneath it, not on top of it. So you can see here, I still have quite a bit of sand left over and this was after shaking out the seaweed at the beach, bringing it home, rinsing it out a bit, getting some of that washed out. And then as I was adding it to the bed, I was shaking it one more time and I did end up with this much sand after all of those steps. Now, if this is like a total one-off thing, having a little bit of sand in the garden bed is not a big deal at all. But if you use this on a regular basis, you probably don't want sand just because it doesn't trap nutrients and moisture very well. So you don't want too much sand in your garden bed. I filled this raised bed garden with seaweed, fertilizer, and mulch two weeks ago. It was full to the brim. And you can see even after all of the steps that I've mentioned doing here, it has settled quite a bit. So if you are going to use seaweed or kelp as a covering on your soil, don't skimp. Go way more than you think you need because it will settle. Using seaweed, fertilizer, and mulch in a Florida vegetable garden is an absolute no-brainer. It is a free resource that is really helpful to the soil and the plants. If you are in the interior of the state and you did want to use seaweed as a fertilizer, you can always use kelp meal, which is dried and packaged seaweed. Um, but if you live on the coastlines, you might as well collect it yourself. If you're interested in the kelp meal dried, I do have a link for that below in the show notes so you can head on there and purchase it via Amazon. When you purchase through those links, it does help support the work that I do here on the channel at no additional cost to you and is greatly appreciated. If you liked this video or want to learn more about different soil amendments or any other gardening topics, make sure to leave me a comment below. I try to work in as many of the topics that are requested as possible. Subscribe while you're down there and hit the little bell next to it so you're alerted every time a new video comes out on Florida vegetable gardening.